G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game spawning in on the southeast side of the map playing in purple as the Chinese we've got Voldemar 1902 back once again and on the opposite side of the map playing in the color yellow as the Ottomans it's Lenok. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are here on Hill and Dale, a map that we haven't seen for quite some time. Yes, it is still in the map ranked pool. I just, I seem to never get it. I, you know what? I, I take it back. I did actually play, uh, in fact, I actually played this matchup earlier today. Uh, but uh, it is, uh, it, it's a map that you really don't see that much anymore. But looks like Lee Nock going to be opening up by going for a military school. Bit of an awkward spot. But to be honest, there's no real good spot for him to put this military school. Maybe here, this, this was probably a good spot adjacent to the town center uh, but decides to put it quite far forward i'm curious to see exactly how leenok plays this now the strategy i played up against earlier was just your typical one base ottoman build order uh, which you guys would be very familiar with on the channel i just posted a video about it so it was basically that build order only difference was that the player that i played against uh they threw in a town center about the 12 to 13 minute mark uh, and and looked to try and adapt that way so i'm curious how Voldemar looks to play it a little bit differently or whether he looks to play it the same way I did. I just went for 2TC Song and I think that's probably the best thing that you can do on this map just because the way I think about this matchup is that Ottomans, they take a little bit of time to get going. They're kind of like uh, the the <laughs> the example I use is like the internal combustion engine. If you've ever, you know, driven one of those old cars, you put the foot down, you got to take a little bit of time to do it. Compare that to like an electric vehicle. If you've ever driven on like an electric scooter or something like that, you put your foot down boom it just goes immediately that's like the french right they, they're just straight in and they're just dishing out damage compared that to the ottomans they take a little bit of time to ramp up now obviously the chinese that's a whole different story but my, my theory is that you should probably have enough time before the ottoman really ramps up to get that 2tc going to get that defense uh with the chukunu but who knows, maybe Voldemort looks to do something different. Look at Voldemort. Oh my lord, he's doing the Drongo build. We've got 11 villages right here on the Chinese. Take a look at this. The Drongo build coming out right now. Now he should... The, the correct thing to do here is move five villages uh, to this, this straggler right here and then take them out to gold. Wherever the gold mine may be, it's back here. He might not do that, though, because uh, it's gonna ha he's going to have to do the cross. Uh, but he's a little bit late. There we go. Okay, he's got it. It's the Drongo build coming out. I, I, I'm actually really, like... I'm so... I feel blessed right now to be seeing this. The Drongo build coming out live. Voldemar are going to be doing it. So taking five bills from here, uh, moving them over to the gold vein uh, will be his next move can be a little bit there we go now we're gonna be moving them out so dropping this down so some of these bills are still carrying wood and when he completes this mining camp it's gonna make sure that the uh the wood is carried over so they will, all the villagers here will drop this off as long as he doesn't shift queue the bills you don't want to shift queue the bills there we go he drops off 40 wood and now he's got enough wood for his next lumber camp but a little bit of a mistake coming out from him went for a bit of a bold uh, a little bit of a bold angle with the sheep. So I always like to just collect the sheep around my base and then I go out into the map. On a map like Hill and Dale, I kind of like to just come out into the middle and then just do a bit of a, a small loop around. So he goes idle for a little bit here and this will affect the build order or the timing a little bit. Uh, but at the moment, he's just waiting on that uh, that extra up there. There we see it now, that extra gold coming in does the force drop off. So he, he's actually done this to a T. This is very, very good. The only only thing I could be critical of is the, uh, the sheep. But speaking of critical, take a look at this. We got some moist action over here on the gold mine villagers coming out looking to get their daggers here spearmen being aggressive be -E aggressive right now ottomans leonok looking strong and over on the other side of the map leonok let's take a look at what he's got going on it's the twin minaret madrasa beautiful spot for it right here you love this so whenever you're placing the twin minaret madrasa you always want to you, it's not always possible sometimes it's a it's it's a bit awkward with the positioning uh, but you always want it so that it's facing towards your town center on the bottom side. That way, because the berries spawn at the top, that way you're going to be able to uh, eat the berries safely next to the proximity of the town center. Here it also doubles as the mill for the berry bush. So beautiful little spacing that he's got there. Uh, you can look at the idle time that's being caused right now. Lenok just doing a, a marvelous job. Uh, of, of being annoying and villagers trying to get a surround they're just trading out those hits one by one that's exactly how you want to play it just trade out those hits one by one you can see that voldemar still working towards that 200 gold finally gets it in now and the question is where does he go from here he can go for uh he can go for two tcs or he can look to go into oh rest in peace little dude he can look to go into two tcs or he can look to go into uh just a complete 
uh, a, a complete Chukunu play. Uh, but Barbican coming down and he's going to be putting it on the gold. So I, I would honestly agree with this, even though it seems so weird putting the Barbican back here. Like, obviously, you kind of want the Barbican at the front. Uh, but here, there's aggression coming in. The walk time from the villagers. Barbican's really not that big. Uh, it does potentially stop raids coming in from that angle as well. But Lee not going to come in. Going to be annoying once again. Five minute age up time. Not too bad there from Voldemort. Got to be careful with this villager though. One more hit. Two more hits. Three more hits. How many hits is it going to take? He's going to take two more from that one. Spearman not having a lot of luck right there. He's going to have to pull these back. And look at him now fighting up against the Spearman. Get some idle time. That villager is going to go down. Unfortunately, Voldemar not paying attention. Oh, it's going to be close actually, that villager. I, I, I... Oh. Leenok he calls it back. And now he's got more coming out. But Leenok just buying so much value here with this early Ottoman pressure. I'm loving it from, from him. And we see once again the villager almost going down. No, no, no. Oh, gosh, it's so close. He's doing such a, a, a marvelous job here fighting against these villagers. Uh, and, you know, he, he's getting so much value. Like, sure, he's not killing anything. But look at this right here. These are all one hit away. You bring a scout in right now. And that's one, one health, one health. I think that one there is on eight health or something. Yeah, yeah eight health. But it's going to be an archery range that comes down. So no stone. Now, I would suspect that the scout for Leenok needs to be sitting about here. He needs to be checking this stone. He needs to be he needs to be aware of exactly what his enemy's up to. He's up to the north at the moment. And we take a look at Leenok, and he's got five villages on stone, and he's also dropping down the military school. So it looks like he's going to just be going for a, a two-base play here. Uh, so a bit of a... I wouldn't necessarily say unique opening. Uh, for the Ottomans, but definitely something that is underplayed at the moment. We don't really see a whole lot of two-base Ottoman. Um, it, it's normal, it normally tends to be just one, uh, and it makes a lot of sense, right? Because there, there's a lot of power in the one-base Ottomans with advantages uh, like the, the military schools just pumping out units. It's a flat rate, uh, and you can get those big eco-techs in as well. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to be pulling out the, uh, the two-base play here. And that's going to help against the 2TC Song Dynasty. But by the same token, the 2TC Song Dynasty does very well when it comes to keeping up with the village account. So I think that uh, Voldemar is going to be in a, in a decent spot. But I do like the fact that Leenok has gone uh, into the second town center, uh, opening up with the military school. It just makes a lot of sense because now as China, you don't really want to go for that early, um, that early second town center because you've got all this aggression and you don't know what's coming. Uh, but by the same token, uh, you know, if, if you do that... Uh, then your enemy might might battering ram push you, but if you if you don't do that, then you're going to be behind on economy. So, yeah, a bit of an awkward spot, but we can see he's got plenty of resources in the bank. Second town center going to be coming down on the hunt. Beautiful little spot that he's got there. Chicken moving out, very happy. We can see that the meta has come out, so he hasn't gone with Anatolian hills. Instead, going for meta drums, uh, which has definitely become the meta. It was interesting to see how Anatolian hills was so f it was so favorable. Everybody loved Anatolian hills uh, in the in the first three or four weeks of Ottomans, and then it very quickly shifted in, into the meta drums. Just so strong, having this early meta out, getting a little bit of extra attack damage or a little bit of ranged armor, you know, whatever it is that you please. And you can see him pumping it out right now. He's got that range defense. But uh, going to be focusing down the meta. Got to be careful not to lose this meta as well. But uh, any any Ottoman player worth their weight will be making sure that they're pumping out metas uh, so that there'll be at least more than, than one meta you'd hope for. Uh, but unfortunate little cleanup right there uh, for Leenok. So he's going to, or rather for uh, Voldemar, plus one ranged armor yet to come in. We do see there is uh, three armor on these bad boys already, and they, they don't have their plus one range attack. So I would almost say a bit of a mistake right here from Voldemar pushing out this early on in the game. Still yet to add in those spearmen. Still yet to hit that big mass. We do see plus one has finally come in. Steeled Arrow coming in now for Voldemar. Uh, but uh, it, it feels not necessarily a little bit late, just that push was a little bit early. Uh, so he was he was quite greedy there and, and lost a decent amount of his mass because when it comes to playing Chukunu, you really want to maintain that mass. And that was something that we didn't see him do. But we do see the barracks now getting dropped down. Still yet to be supervising the archery range as well. How many Imperial officials is he sitting on? Let's double check. I see two. So it looks like he's uh, supervising the mill and supervising the lumber camp. So interesting decisions right there. I, I typically like to supervise the archery range early on. Just really try and get out a good mass of, of uh, Chukunu. But I love the fact that right now, Leenok, he's going to have to really deal with the, uh, the Chinese 1TC boom. Because we look at the village account right now, 40 versus 32. Leenok is down by eight villages. And that's huge considering he just got a second town center. So I would suspect by maybe like 55 to 60 villages, Leenok will eventually catch up to Voldemar. That's the difference that you've got here when it comes to that economic count. Now there's Spahi coming in. And where does Leenok go from here? Is he looking for a castle age? He's got four villages on gold. It could be the case. Yeah, I think it's going to be a castle age. I think he's looking for a quick castle here, which is interesting because there, there is a timing window that can be exploited here where... Uh, Voldemar can push with battering ramps. Now, you guys have all seen the build order. You know exactly how it works. You know what I'm thinking about. And I think Voldemar's thinking the same thing. 
because we can see him start to push out and Siege Engineering is coming through. This is exactly it. I don't know how Lee Knock is going to hold this, but I'm curious to see how it goes. Voldemar is going to make sure that when he does push, that there has got to be enough battering rams. You can't be doing this push with one battering ram. It's got to be two. It's got to be three battering rams at the very least. So he's going to start moving out. We do see survival techniques also coming through for him. He spots out the spa. He, spa, he also spot out him. So he's going to be very, very carefully warding that off. But now Lee Knock, not actually looking for the age up. Instead, just going to be picking up some economic upgrades. We also see plus one range attack coming through. Looking for that steel arrow on his side. He's picked up plus one. He's uh, ranged armor already. We can see that one coming through. Iron Undermesh already come through. So definitely the right decision for him. But how does he hold on in this position? Oh, there's a big army there. Look at that. Nine Spahi at the moment. Only a handful of archers. But uh, take a look at this. Over on the other side, we only see the two... The, uh, the the two spearmen. And this could actually be quite powerful. And part of the reason why uh, Voldemar might lose this right now is simply because he hasn't scouted this. Spearmen going to come out, but that, that's really not enough spearmen. Archer's going to be able to clean that up. More spearmen coming in up the rear. But the, the extra ranged armor here is going to be massive. Chukunu only doing one damage. And it means that because they're only doing one damage, it's like fighting up against knights. It's so damn difficult. But these guys have got extra damage against you. We see Fortitude also coming out with them as well. In fact, I think... No, he hasn't actually used Fortitude just yet. But gets a great surround. Single spearmen coming in. In fact, he's still got a couple spearmen here so he's going to be able to hold on in this position chukunu now going to be able to fire, fire down that meta very well done that needs to be the first thing that goes as soon as your enemy oversteps with the meta blast that thing down i really want to see him supervising the, the barracks he is perfect and he, is he supervising he's supervising the, the archery range as well this is exactly what he needs to be doing right now this is what makes the chinese timing push so strong because other civilizations would have to drop down more production to get more value and, and create more units but the chinese don't have to do that they just swing their imperial officials into this now we do see a third imperial official come out i'd love to see a fourth one come out as well just to supervise any of those mills so we do see a mill right here supervise this mill just get a little bit more food or a little bit more longevity on the food alternatively you can supervise the lumber camp a little bit of an awkward housing position there for Voldemort. he does he does switch it up though Everyone now jumping inside the battering ram. He's going to begin focusing down that outpost, but you can see the numbers here already looking pretty decent. Third military school also coming out. Sparky looking to try and take control, but uh, he, he needs to be focusing down the meta here. This is going to be the key. The, the key here is going to be focusing down that meta, but he just ignores it completely. Looks to continue working through those spy on the front line, but we can see the numbers here not looking the best right now for Voldemar, and he's going to be forced back. O the consequence of only pushing in with this single battering ram is that it's really going to hurt, but a whole bunch of villagers going to get caught. And that's going to put Lenok into a pretty poor position here. We can see the villager count going to start falling down. He's thrown away probably about four or five villagers there. But at the same time, Lenok cleans this up. And that's exactly what he wants to do. Because even though he loses the villagers, now he's got an advantage because he's got a mass. And keep in mind behind this, he also scales because he's got two town centers. If Voldemar was on two TCs himself, it would be a different story. But he's not. It's on one TC. And from here, China does not do well. So I think Lenok has done a great job in identifying what the potential threat is from China. He knows that, okay, it's probably going to be a true canoe push. It might be off one TC. And if that's the case, what I'm going to do is go for an early second town center and then just mass Sparky. That's exactly what he did. And it worked an absolute charm. Able to take control of this game and now pushing out onto the map here. His mass isn't that big, but he doesn't have to worry. He's not going to get caught out of position because his enemy... Sorry, I'm speaking so fast. He's not going to get caught out of position because his enemy has no cavalry. So he's able to push up right now. Meta once again, sitting up, up, up the front. Needs to be careful. He needs to try and pull this bad boy back. It does die. And with that, Spearman going to be moving onto the front line, but the archer's going to be happy to clean it up. Going to be so careful with those Spearman. And this is where it comes back to the Barbican, right? If you have the Barbican sitting here, your Barbican is hold, helping you hold this push right now. But the consequence of going back here, sure, it was convenient at the time, but was it worth it in the long run? Those are the big questions. Outpost going to be coming up. Going to be jumping all the villagers inside the outpost any second. But you can see it's, it's dwindling. It feels like it's dwindling at the moment. Remember, the tempo advantage is going to be in favor of Lee Nock, or at least it should slowly swing towards Lee Nock. For the moment, though, it maintain, maintains relatively even. As we get closer to the, the base of the defender, more reinforcements come in more quickly. And he's able to hold on a little bit longer. So once again, we've seen almost overextensions from these players, not waiting until they've got enough to secure a kill. And as a result, being punished for it by losing a lot of units and taking trades that they necessarily didn't have to. But look at Lee Nock. He's found the window. He's going up to the third agent. It's very smart of him to do that. But over on the other side of the map, we've got Voldemar moving up and looking to drop down some outposts. Very aggressive positioning here from him. Still yet to see any emplacements on them. But huge walls coming across the map as well. I love this playstyle from Voldemar. Makes a lot of sense looking to try and secure up the map. 
He's managed to, to wall up a little bit already, but taking control of the entire map is, is definitely the right thing to do. You just got to be careful. Don't throw away these spearmen, though, Voldemar. These spearmen are so important. At any, at any moment, there could be 17 Sparky on top of you. You've got to make sure that you've got enough to deal with them. Age up about to come through now. We're going to see it's the MIA. It is the MIA. No real surprises there. Leenok dropping that bad boy down. And now, don't be deceived by this villager count at the top. You can see that it's 58 villagers against 60. But remember, Lee Nock has got military school, military, military school, three military schools. And he will have the MIA coming up shortly. And he'll have a fourth military school coming up as well. Which means that his effective economy right now is functioning closer to 75 villagers, 80 villagers, once he starts getting all of those, those additions coming through. Fortification was elected there by Voldemort, but it looks like he's just... Uh, He's decided to avoid it. And now the push is going to be coming in. But once again, they're not going to be on the defensive. Archer numbers looking good for him. Looking healthy. The two town center opening doing well against China. But now the age up about to come through. He wants to ideally avoid fighting where possible against the uh, the Chinese in, in the second age. Once he hits the third age, you'll expect to see upgrades start coming through. He should be looking for, at the very least, veterancy for his archers. We'll ride on board with Leenok and see what he does. Veterancy for the archers as well as balanced projectiles. And we do see Wedge Root that's coming through. It's the double blacksmith upgrade. Only the Ottomans get this. I mean, well, there's other sims that get it, but only the Ottomans build double blacksmiths. You know, every single game, you can be guaranteed that you're going to see Ottoman double blacksmith coming out. And I think that's what makes this so powerful. It's this castle age timing, the double blacksmith timing. It just makes so much sense because now, as soon as you've aged up, as soon as you pick up all three of these upgrades, you're on another level. Your enemy just can't compete with you. Even with Chukunu, they can't compete with you. It's just not possible. Your units are way too strong. Interestingly, we don't see any additional metas coming, coming out just yet. There we go. Meta now, <laughs> meta now coming out for Leenok. Leenok playing this Ottomans very well. Playing it a lot better than what we saw at the uh, at the Walla Lol, that's for sure. At the Walla Lol, looks a little bit worrisome. Jeez, this wall got up quickly, didn't it? Damn, this wall got up quickly. Did that villager die to a wolf or something? How did that villager go down? I don't actually know how that vill went down. But Sparky going to make their way through. Great job by uh, by Leenok to distract. And Voldemar going to be following up, him up to the next stage, I suspect. If we ride on board with him, we do see he did add a second town center in. So going to actually be able to keep up on the economic count. I do like this addition by Voldemar. But my fear is that the timing from the Ottomans is going to be way too strong. The Mangonels which are, are guaranteed, right? That's the big thing. In this matchup, you know you're going to be playing against Mangonels. You know that Mangonels are going to be coming out. So you have to be thinking about that. How am I going to deal with the Mangonels? Am I going to stay age two and mass horsemen? Am I going to stay age two and mass spearmen and try and push them? Or am I going to think about going castle age? Am I going to think about getting uh, the astronomical clock tower and getting out some sprinkles on the defensive? Because that's what you're going to be expecting when you're playing in this matchup. Uh, and you can... So right here for Voldemar, he just needs to get back to his base. That's the biggest thing. Don't get caught out of position like this. Needs to run up towards this spot. Draw himself at gate. Okay, he does it. Wonderful. Good job by him. So he needs to make his way up here. Doesn't want to lose his army right now because he doesn't have the upgrades. But Spahi did come through. I don't know how many villagers went down here, but I suspect not a lot. I think he's moved them back over towards this, uh, this eastern position. But we now see a couple more gates going through. I don't know why we need all these gates, Voldemar. But uh, hey, we, we welcome them. We welcome them. But now that push is going to be coming out from our Ottoman player. This is the, the timing push. push the, uh, the deadly timing push from the Ottomans. He's gone for mass archers in the second age. Now it's a very easy transition into men at arms. And we see he's got plenty of men at arms out. Seven men at arms already. He's got another two in queue. So plenty of units. And we do see that the Mangonel has made it out onto the field. And is making its way towards the enemy base. Aris is coming through on the outpost. The age ups come through. I will expect that Voldemar has a sprinkled in queue any second. Take a look at his resources. Not, not a lot of resources. Needs to get this sprinkled over here ASAP. Let's see how he looks to play it. Veterancy coming through on the Chukunu. Needs to be getting plus two and plus two uh, range defense as well. Really key upgrades here. Uh, but even with plus two against the men at arms, it's going to be such a tough time trying to micro that out. And it makes it really difficult to deal with. Manganel moving up the rear. This is, this is where it starts to get scary. Knight actually moves through. It spots out the astronomical clock tower. It could just camp the clock tower. Sprinkled yet to be thrown out in queue. Where are the units here? They're down on the south side. Voldemar definitely feeling a little bit behind. Look at the military difference right now. Leenok versus Voldemar. 73 with three military, with three siege. So 76 versus 25. This is the Ottoman timing push that is so damn deadly. This is so difficult to beat. And you can see just the, the window for Voldemar is non-existent because of the tempo that was gained by Leenok by going for that early second town center. It's finally in. And the Genissary timing push comes in as well. Look at this Ottoman death ball. 
barreling down the hatches of the Chinese base. Voldemar is no slouch. He's an incredibly good player. Both of these guys, obviously, Lee Nock just in a, in a league above Voldemar. Definitely, I think he's a top 10 player. Compare that to Voldemar, probably a bit like maybe top 30, top 40. He's definitely going to struggle holding onto this. He, still no Springled, still no Springled. Springled in queue. No, it's, an, oh, it's, a, it's a clock tower. It's a clock tower. Palace Guard's coming out. Trickanoo going to try and burn through this. Not going to have a whole lot of luck. You can see the Mangonel seconds before disaster. The keep going to be going up. Not as aggressive as I would have liked it, honestly. Can definitely come up a little bit further. Genesary also pushing up Mangonel's shot onto the front line. Excuse me right there. I got a bit excited. Mangonel now onto the back line. This could be it, ladies and gentlemen. There are so many units in here. Look at this timing push from Lee Nock. My God. This is absolutely deadly. I can't believe the amount of units that are out here right now. This is actually crazy how many things he's got here. It all just goes back to that second town center. And, and obviously, you know, all, all of the other military schools that are just pumping out units. This is what makes all that difference. And the tempo here is insane right now for Lee Nock. I don't even know how you hold... How do, how do you deal with this as the Chinese? What's the best play? Because I'm in my head, I'm thinking like three ram timing push, but then this just looks on another level. He manages to make it through now. Camping onto the wood line. The village account going to start to swing in favor of Lee Nock. Military count. It leaves a little bit to be desired. 74 military units against three. Uh, you, you, you kind of feel bad. You've got a single palace guard, Chukunu, nest of bees trying. They're going to take out the mangonel. I mean, let's find the silver lining, hey? Um, but I don't know what you're going to do with the 76 units in your base, Voldemar. Fellas, go check these two creators out. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can catch them. Lee Nock, Voldemar. Well played by Lee Nock. A beautiful game from him there. Great to see Hill and Dale coming back at it again. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. Dominating display right there from Lee Nock.